So I've been driving for like 11 or 12 days now and I've been feeling really burned out. And um, last night I was planning on just leaving. I was actually staying in Whitefish. I found a delicious ice cream spot called like Sweet Treats or Sweet Cream. I think it's called Sweet Cream. So good. But anyway, <laughs> now you can see what I care about these days. So I work in Denali National Park and I see incredible landscapes every single day. I just barely drove through Jasper National Park and Banff National Park. Anyway, I have seen some amazing places and I haven't been to Glacier since I was a baby. I was outside of Glacier this morning and I was just like, uh, I don't know if I have it in me to go. And then I called a buddy and I was talking to him for a while. He was like, yeah, well, if you're burned out, you just need to get a hotel room because it's true. I mean, I have only showered twice in the last 12 days, which is pretty good um, considering I'm living in a car. And he was like, I will say, I get it if you're burned out. Sometimes you need to leave places for when you're not burned out so that you can actually enjoy them. And then he was like, but Glacier is really cool and I think you should go. This is a book about relationships inside America's national parks. And as is always the case with relations, the bonds formed, severed, and renewed within these federal lands are complicated. They are also fundamental to who we are as a country. Whether historical or ecological, political or personal, the connective tissue that holds together or tears apart our public lands begins with we the people. A fuller, more honest narrative has emerged over time mostly from tribal historians who want to right a historical wrong. Knowledge matters. Justice matters. Hindsight shows us our blind spots and biases. We can recognize ourselves as human beings caught in the cultural mores of a specific time. This is not to excuse the brutal acts of the past, but to consider them in the light of what we know now. By definition, our national parks in all their particularity and peculiarity show us as much about ourselves as the landscapes they honor and protect. They can be seen as holograms for an America, born of shadow and light, dimensional, full of contradictions and complexities. Our dreams, our generosities, our cruelties and crimes are absorbed into these parks like water. The poet Rumi says water, stories, the body, all the things we do are mediums that hide and show what's hidden. So much has been lost. Restoration is what is required today. Can we engage in the restoration of a different kind of storytelling? Not the stuff of myths, self-serving and corrupted, but stories that foster integrity within a fragmented nation. Can we change America's narrative of independence to one of interdependence? An interdependence beautifully rendered in the natural histories found in our public lands? These are the parables of change and transition that might offer us maps to help us navigate our future in the era of a warming planet. We've never been here before. It has been said there are two stories in the world. An individual goes on a journey or a stranger comes to town. I'm telling both of these stories and adding a third. A story of homecoming. <laughs>